Back with more Avatar The Last Airbender. This is episode 12 of season 2. Very excited to see what's going to happen next. Will we find Appa in this episode? I don't know. But I don't want to be stressed about it for too long. And I, I want a nice happy episode today, please, Avatar. Um, behind the scenes, today's my birthday, and I thought, well, what better present to give myself than uh, watching Avatar? I'm reacting to that today. Um, Obviously, if, you, if you're watching this on YouTube, then it won't be my birthday today. But hopefully I can get this out for patrons on time on Patreon. But regardless, um, I'm very excited to see where things are going to go next. Who we're going to focus on. Lots of different stuff going down. Um, Iroh and Zuko kind of found a bit of an ally. And they're heading to Ba Sing Se. So are our main team avatar as well to try and track down Appa. So, you know, they're heading towards that same direction. I don't know if they're going to get there in this episode or if there's going to be the journey there still. Um, but either way, I'm really liking the season so far. The twists with Appa being taken stuff, it, it's a, a neat little kind of character-driven story, I feel, in the middle of the season. Because, um, you know, it could all be about Aang mastering all the different elements and stuff like that, and stuff with the Fire Lord going on, and that's obviously still in the background and stuff. Um, but I don't mind little diversions like these when it's kind of a big deal for the characters um, and it opens up some cool things. So yeah, I'm excited to see what's going to happen next. So let's get into the next one. The Serpents pass. They pass an exam. <laughs> that's cool. Well, the Serpents pass. You're sure that's mm. the best way to go? It's the only way. I mean, it's not like we have Oppa to fly us there. Shush up about Appa. Can't you at least try to be sensitive? But I just want to focus on getting to Ba Sing Se and telling the Earth King about the solar eclipse. Oh. Well, okay. It's good to focus on other things to keep you occupied, I suppose. To Ba Sing Se we go. No more distractions. Hello there, fellow refugees. Hello there, distraction. It's hidden, so the Fire Nation can't find it. Hmm. Peaceful fairy ride or deadly pass? I mean... The episode's named after the past, so... I can't believe how many people's lives have been uprooted by the Fire Nation. We're all looking Damn, this feels quite timely. After all these years, I've returned to the scene of my greatest military disgrace. Mm. As a tourist. <laughs> Look around. We're not tourists. We're refugees. I'm tired of living like this. Aren't we all? <sighs> my name's Jet. <gasps> oh! Smellerby and Longshot. Liberate some food. God, oh, that's a hell of a team up, those two. I'm in. You gonna flood any more villages? One cabbage slug could destroy the entire ecosystem <gasps> of Bossing Sick! Security! Oh! Oh! <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking we hadn't seen this guy in ages. Oh. I see 50 avatars a day, and by the way, not a very impressive costume. Oh. Besides, blimmin' cosplayers. I'll take care of this. I don't doubt My that. Name is Tom Bayfong, and I'll need four tickets. Thank you very much. All right, we skated nice. that lady good. <laughs> tickets and passports, please. Maybe you remember this. <gasps> it's her! Sokka, it's good to see you! Everyone's coming back in this episode! Happy birthday to me! Didn't work out? Ah, I'll grab a tree branch and do a few chin touches every now and then. You got stuck in a hole recently. Hi, Momo. Good to see you, too. Aww. So why are you guys getting tickets for the ferry? Wouldn't you just fly across on Appa? I'm doing fine. Would everybody stop worrying about Oh, dear. Avatar Aang. He's afraid of overcompensating now because he went all. Wow, last time. Everything's gone. I'll talk to the lady for you. No passports, no tickets. I was gonna say get maybe get Toph to do it. You'll get to the city safely. I'll lead you through the serpent's path. Ah, that makes sense. I'm coming too. Are you sure that's a good idea? Sokka, I thought you. I'm sure it's a good idea. I do. It's just. It says, abandon hope. How could we abandon hope? No. Oh. That's all we have. I don't know. I'd rather it say, like, live, laugh, love. Hope is just a distraction. We need 
to focus on what we're doing right now, and that's getting across this pass. Yeah, that's what he's been doing about the whole Appa situation. Okay. Not that he can get to him anymore. You sunk my battleship. Ah! I'm very glad you're here, Tov. You're perfectly capable of taking care of yourself. Wait! Oh, never mind. I thought I saw a spider, but you're fine. <laughs> Is he wary because his last love interest turned into the moon or something? Look at all those chickens! I love how they waited just long enough for me to forget about Jet, and then they brought him back. <laughs> wow. I know sometimes it hurts more to hope, and it hurts more to care, but you have to promise me that you won't stop caring. Mm -hmm. Come on, you need a hug. I like that Thank you for your he's gone tomorrow. both sides of it, like super angry about it, then and caring. It needs to find the balance. As the Avatar should. Something happened at the North Pole and I couldn't protect someone. Aww. I don't want anything like that to ever happen again. I lost someone I cared about. He oh. didn't die. He just went away. I only had a few days to get to know him. <laughs> he was smart and brave. Is he better looking? It is, you stupid. Oh. I'm sorry. Yeah, maybe not in front of the moon, eh? No. I've done some things in my past that I'm not proud of. But that's why I'm going to Bossing Say. For a new beginning. Okay. Second chance. Everyone's getting redeemed on this boat. Lovely. I believe in second chances. Hmm. Oh, I don't like that zoom. Oh my god, she's Moses! That is cool. There's always a bigger fish. What is that thing? <gasps> is it a serpent? Oh! Hello! I think I just figured out why they call it the serpent. <laughs> what big eyes you have. There was some great water bending stuff in this episode. Damn. Freeze it, yeah. No. Oh. This thing needs to chill out. <laughs> Actually, I'm gonna stay on my little island where I can see. Oh maybe not. <laughs> I mean that would be quite difficult for us, I suppose, wouldn't it? Oh dear. <laughs> Actually, it's me. Oh, well, <laughs> you can go ahead and let me drown now. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice that she would have shown appreciation for him there, though. Damn, that was so cool. I and Katara work really well together. Now it's nothing but smooth sailing to Bossing Say. <gasps> oh, nice said it. Oh dear. The baby's coming. What? Can it no? Hold an interstate. Sokka, calm down. And us outcasts have to stick together. We have to watch each other's backs. Because no one else will. I've realized lately. We'll see. Being on your own isn't always the best path. Hmm. You have to come see this. The circle of lives. She sounds healthy. She's beautiful. I want our daughter's name to be unique. I want it to mean something. Aw, buddy. I've been going through a really hard time lately. But you've made me hopeful again. I know what I want to name our baby now. Hope. It's reminding me how I feel about Appa. And how 
I feel about you. Awesome. You'll find him, Aang. I know. Thank you, Katara. You ready, Momo? Aww. No wings. I came along because I wanted to make sure you got through the Serpent's Pass safely. But now I need to get back to the other Kyoshi warriors. So you came along to protect me? Mm -hmm. Listen, I just got carried away and before I knew it, I... Aww. You talk too much. <laughs> I really like these two. Damn! How long did that take to build? Oh, I suppose if you're an earthbender. Like, <laughs> two seconds. <laughs> uh oh. Oh, heck. Okay, I bloody love this episode. I'm so glad I got such a really fun, interesting one um, for my birthday treat. Um, not that, you know, there's very often an episode I'm kind of air on. Um, but yeah, I really enjoyed what they had going on with this one. So many, like, returns and everything as well. Um, so it really isn't just, like, a little diversion from the overall plot um, because they can bring back all these different things and, go oh, interesting stuff. Um, I mean, there wasn't a lot to the Iroh and Zuko plots. So we're going to kind of talk about all that first, I suppose. Um, so to see them on their journey, they kind of seemed to be a much smoother ride for them to get on board, uh, you know, a journey towards Ba Sing Se. Um, and then mixing up with Jet and Co. Um, I mean, I, I, I felt like, I can't remember if I said I thought maybe we'd see Jet again after that episode in season one. Um, I thought it would be interesting if they did, but they didn't necessarily have to. So the fact that they've brought him back into it, um, and he's going to be paired with Zuko, I think is very interesting. Um, was it was it Jet's episode before in season one? Was that the scene that I always talk about with Aang and Zuko? Was that like no? Because that's after he rescues him, isn't it? Maybe I can't remember. Doesn't matter. Um, but yeah, I really like that they've brought him back into it and the idea that maybe um, this is his fresh start, he actually regrets his actions of the past um, trying to drown a village of people um, so if he's like legit in terms of that and he does want to like redeem himself it could be cool to see what happens with that um, even if he's not in that place right now I think him being near Iroh and the influence that he could have on him would probably maybe change his ways anyway because obviously Jet, I don't think really had like a guiding figure as he grew up, and that's kind of why things went the way they did with him. Um, so to see him not only come back but then collide with Zuko and Iroh, you know, Bond ever being outcasts, he knew who um, Zuko was, but you know, didn't go shouting it from the rooftops or anything. Um, you know, he could have got a decent bit of money if he turned him in. I'm sure because they wanted, aren't they? So and the fact that he just didn't because he's looking out for a fellow outcast, I thought was interesting. And I liked them pairing up and like flawlessly stealing that food. Um, again, I guess, is it like a Robin Hood situation? They stole from the rich to give to the poor, being themselves. Um, so I, I guess I don't entirely mind them stealing the food if that was the case. But um, yeah, I, I think that's a very interesting selection of characters there. And I'm intrigued to see where that's going to go. Because um, I think it's safe to say Zuko's very much been on the path of redemption, I feel like. Um, at least in like the audience's eyes, maybe not to, you know, Team Avatar yet, but maybe there'll be a chance. Um, but I guess it's because we of the audience have seen a lot more of Zuko's backstory, and we've seen a lot more of how he operates um, on his own or with Ira and stuff. Whereas Team Avatar haven't really seen that side of him, so they, you know, it kind of makes sense they'd still absolutely hate his guts. Um, and even with Jet, you know, they don't exactly have the best history with them. They didn't part as best friends, um, I think it's safe to say, when they first met. Um, so to see those two like paired up, maybe having a bit of a team up, I don't know where that's going to go. Um, but Iroh is very wise, and I feel like he often speaks the truth. And when he was talking about, oh, you know, I believe in a second chance and stuff like that, and I like that he looked at Zuko in that moment, because, um, you know, he... Very much, I think the key of this episode was like the idea of having hope, and I think Iroh is very hopeful in that respect. He often is, 
because um, he always finds the best in any situation, you know. Even in this one, he was like, I can't believe I'm back here. My greatest failure as a tourist. And he's like, look at my hat. I've got some pretty flowers on it. Um, so I think Iroh, it's his nature to be quite hopeful anyway. Um, and I think he's found the right balance of like the hopeful and the seriousness, which is what Aang was struggling with in this one. I feel like Aang's trying to achieve and find the balance that Iroh has mastered. Um, you know, Iroh's had a long time to master it. Um, but I, I find that a really interesting thing. Um, and I think, you know, that little look to Zuko, he has hope for Zuko, he has hope for himself. Um, and I think he'd happily spread that hope um, onto Jet as well, and maybe they will have a clean slate at Ba Sing Se. Um, although it does seem there's going to be a bit of trouble in Ba Sing Se, based on what Aang and Momo saw at the end there. Um, so mash all over again. But yeah, I, I liked that idea. Like, um, we see, you know, Avatar, Team Avatar, all that group, you know, struggling with the idea of hope, literally finding it at the end with the birth of the baby. Um, Iroh, I think, has found that balance of it that Aang's been searching for, um, or at least would be most effective having. Um, so yeah, I, I don't know what the end goal is going to be for that. Is Jet just a means to an end for like a story arc for Zuko or Iroh? Um, is he actually going to go through a bit of a redemption? Um, so I feel like the fact that Iroh was like saying about second chance and stuff to Jet, I feel like that's probably where the story with him will go. Because I can't see a world where Iroh is going to be wrong about that, you know? Um, so that would be cool. And yeah, the fact that that must have been episode 10, season 1. So we've had... So we've had 22 episodes since we saw him. Um, so it's like just long enough to be like, oh yeah, this guy. But when he shows up, you still kind of remember him. Um, and I think that is something that the show does do quite cleverly. They do have... Every character normally has quite a distinct thing that you remember. Um, so like Suki is kind of, you know, the makeup and stuff she had on her face. Um, and she's all kiyoshied up. Um, and she dons that again. And of course, you may not necessarily recognise her when you first see it. And Sokka doesn't either until we're reminded of who she is. Um, and then Jet has, you know, the thing in his mouth. Um, you know, um, Sokka has his top knot. <laughs> Aang has an arrow. Um, Katara has her cool little Brady things. Um, Toff is blind. Um, Zuko has his scar. Um, Iroh is just too iconic to forget. <laughs> um, but the fact that they do have little things like that with the characters, you are more likely that not to remember them. Even the cabbage guy came back. Amazing. Um, you just remember the cabbages. I knew the... I don't know if I actually ended up saying the joke a couple of reactions ago, but in my afterthoughts, I remember thinking, like, we haven't seen the cabbage guy in ages, I wonder if he'll ever pop up again. Because um, that is an excellent recurring joke with that guy. I mean, I feel so bad for him. But, <laughs> oh, the poor cabbages. But again, even him coming back into it, we had Jet, we had the cabbages, we had Suki, everyone was kind of uh, coming back into it. So that was really cool. Um, so yeah, I don't know where that whole story is going with that, but I'm really excited that those characters are back in it and exactly what Jet and Zuko are going to get up to, potentially paired together, and if Iroh is going to have much of an influence over them. I would assume he will, because Zuko, like he said, he's learned like maybe being on my own isn't necessarily the best, so I think maybe he wants to keep that new group that they formed together, especially because they so flawlessly <laughs> took all that food, and um, they could probably conquer the world together. Um, so yeah, I'm excited to see where that goes with all of that. Um, we've had some like, exploration of refugees and stuff in this one, which is sadly still very timely today. Um, even like recent weeks and months and stuff, we've had a lot of awful news um, and images, videos coming out with refugees and stuff. So I like that, you know, a show that aired on Nickelodeon or whatever it was, you know, we'll go there um, even way back when this aired. So I, I found that really interesting as well. Um, and it's kind of nice that they include that in an episode all about hope. I feel like that's kind of a sweet message in a way, you know, to not lose hope. I mean, I can't speak for refugees because I'm not one. Um, I can't even imagine what that would be like, really. Um, but I like how they were kind of tying that into um, an episode like that. I think it's quite a nice, sweet little message. Um, so yes, we had everything with them. Um, the little side characters we had as well with um, 
Ying, I think was the name of the pregnant woman, and then naming the daughter Hope. I thought that was a nice way of, you know, showing you what the theme of the episode was. Um, the big serpenty thing, that was really cool. The water bending skills in this episode. I mean, Toph also, we need to give some credit because she did some good work. She saved like two people's lives. Um, and then her life was saved in return. I love that little gag when um, Suki saved her and she thought it was soccer and she was like, you can let me drown. <laughs> She'd rather drown than have to admit um, what she may have done there to soccer or anyone. So that's funny. Um, you know, if I embarrass myself, you, you must let me drown. <laughs> I must simply pass away. I like that energy with Toph. Um, she's really growing on me a hell of a lot. Um, that was definitely one of the funniest lines I think we've had in the show. Um, but yeah, I uh, liked the little kind of set of characters we had with those guys and uh, the water bending skills on show. Um, whether it was Katara like freezing herself in ice for a bit, was that Aang who did that? Um, the way Aang and Katara work so well together and they like knocked that big ass serpent out, awesome. Um, lots of really cool, unique water bending skills there. Very good argument, I think, for that one actually being the cooler one. I always thought earth bending would be the one I'd want. But this is kind of turned me around on water bending, maybe being a bit more, well, quite literally cool, because they can do ice and shit. Um, but yeah, they're constantly inventive with what, you know, the bending powers can get them to achieve and what they can do. Um, I like that they have such good ideas for that, keep it so fresh. Uh, so that was fantastic as well. All like the action, earth bending, water bending, power scenes, really, really good. Um, and I liked, yeah, how well Aang and Katara worked together. Aang kind of going complete opposite to the last episode because he didn't want to go for like Avatar State and everything again. Um, to just pretend he doesn't care, focus on something else. Um, the fact that the sign was like abandoned hope or something and he was like, maybe we should because that's just how he was feeling because that's a better way. Well, this is a new way of him trying to deal with what's happening to Appa, maybe just pushing it back a bit. Um, but it just needed to find the balance, which the Avatar is supposed to bring balance to. So I like that he's again learning that. And Katara is instrumental in that process for him. Um, you know, she's very much slipped into that role, I think, of giving Aang all this guidance and, you know, enlightening him into what's best. I feel like if Aang didn't know Katara, um, he definitely won't be ready in time to, like, fight the Fire Lord and everything when the comet arrives and stuff. Um, so that worked out quite well for him, really, meeting Katara. Um, so I, I love that role she's kind of playing in being a, a true guide for him and allowing him to be the best avatar he can be. And that realisation, you know, when he was kind of trying to be so closed off and then he found hope again when Hope the baby was born. Uh, I thought that was a really lovely moment. And when what he said to Katara afterwards, um, you know, about it just reminded me of how I feel about Appa, how I feel about you. Wholesome as hell. I love it. I love their relationship. Um, so it's just cool to see Aang try and find the balance of what he needs to do. Because at the end of the day, any of them finding any sort of emotional balance and integrity, considering they're all like teenagers, is incredibly impressive. Um, I'm 25 and I'm still a mess. So the fact that Aang can come up with like a level headedness that he found at the end of this episode at like 12, damn son, impressive. I mean, I know he's like 112 but it doesn't count when he's frozen for a hundred years. Uh, so I really liked that, and even Sokka saved a lot of emotional maturity in this one. Um, and I really liked Toph, she had some fun moments, like I've already talked about, so she was really great in this episode. I always like Momo in episodes as well. I, I thought it was quite sweet that he actually went with Aang at the end as well. He wants to save his buddy, wholesome. Um, and I actually think one of my favourite aspects of the episode was Sokka and Suki and their little story. I love that they brought her back. I was always hoping we'd see her again after the um, Kaiyoshi episode where um, she <laughs> kicked Sokka's ass for being sexist. Um, and I like that he had learned that lesson, but because of what happened with Yue at the end of season one, he was kind of on full panic mode. Like, I don't want to lose you know, another girl that I really care about. And I also like that he almost kind of held back from anything happening with Suki again. Um, because he, he probably still feels like, well, is it going to be like a betrayal of UA and what we had um, if I move on at any point? I don't know exactly how long it's been since the end of season one. Um, I imagine some time, a decent amount of time has passed, but especially when 
you know, they nearly kissed under the moonlight and stuff. You know, you could just imagine her face being like, excuse me? Um, at least do this during the daytime. But um, I liked that, and Sokka's being, you know, kind of his classic idiot self <laughs> and um, seeming quite foolish in, you know, OTT in his protection um, of Suki in this one. It feels like, has he learnt nothing? Obviously Suki can, t can take care of herself, but it actually comes from the character development he got with his last like big romance at the end of season one. So I thought that was really interesting. And when you could, you could just tell like that was what was bothering him. The fact that, you know, this other love interest that he had is now back in his life how, uh, for however briefly, I hope we see him again after this. Um, and, you know, it's probably a very mixed feelings of emotion there. I'm sure he's super happy to see her again because a few episodes back he asked after her, didn't he? When they went to Kiyoshi. Um, and he seemed quite disappointed that she wasn't there. So he obviously wanted to see her again, and now we've got that chance. Um, so I like that they even set that up a couple of episodes back, being like, yeah, remember this character? Because you're going to need to remember her in a few weeks. Um, so I thought that was very clever as well. Uh, clearly they have an excellent structure when they like put the seasons together and stuff. Um, it really does show. Um, but yeah, just his reluctance for anything to maybe happen or to then get too close and he has to lose them again, especially because she ended up having to go back but I like that he was so OTT about trying to protect her all this time she was just protecting him because she wanted to make sure he got through the serpent's pass safely um you know he didn't go into like the full details like well I, I kind of really liked this girl and then she turned into the moon um you know he didn't mention it was like another like romance or something that he had on the go but um I, I feel like Suki's probably smart enough to maybe have sensed that and that's why she felt especially bad when they nearly kissed under the moonlight. Um, but I thought that was really nice. And it's even Suki's speech to him when, you know, she was like, oh, I know what it feels like to care about someone and then lose them. Not sure if you'll see them again. And she was talking about him. I thought that was very sweet. I do like those two together a lot. Um, and uh, I think Sokka did kind of find some peace with that the next day. Um, probably with the revelation that Suki was more so protecting him. Um, so I feel like when UA did what she did, I think Sokka found some comfort in her being like, you know, well, I'm in the moon now. I'll always be with you. Um, he found some comfort in that, I think. He found some closure in that. And, you know, knowing that UA is like watching over him, protecting him, then he finds a similar kind of closure with Suki being like, oh, I, was I came along to protect you all this time. Um, it's a similar kind of emotional beat, I guess. And I think that provided him the closure for him to kiss her at the end. Um, being like, oh, you talk too much, which is often his problem. Um, even at the start of this episode, when he like, mentioned Appa and Katara's like, please stop doing that. Um, so I really liked that as well. A bit of growth for soccer, a bit of maturity there. Um, even character development and how they kissed, because she initiated it last time they met and it was just on the cheek. And again at the start to reintroduce herself. And then he was the one who went through it twice um, in this one. Um, so I like that slow progression of that relationship. I do hope we see Suki again. I really like her. Um, and I like to see that relationship kind of grow and develop a bit more as time goes by. I'd love her to just join the team full time. Um, but maybe it would get a bit too crowded if we keep adding people. Especially if my ultimate goal comes true of like Zuko joining them. Maybe Iroh as well would be iconic. Um, but yeah, I really liked what they did with that whole thing and just showing... Um, Sokka's continuing maturity and some nice kind of ideas of moving on, finding hope um, for a future romance maybe, even though he lost someone before, he also kind of regained hope um, for maybe being with someone just as Aang found his own version of hope and um, Ying gave birth to hope quite literally, so that's damn impressive to actually give birth to hope. Um, so yeah, I thought that was a really interesting theme for the episode to kind of go down. And they did some really great stuff with everyone. And now um, Aang has finally got to Over the Wall and uh, shenanigans. So I'm sure we'll be dealing with that in the next episode. Um, I also hope we continue on with the Zuko and Jet pairing team up. See where that uh, will go. Because I really don't have any predictions for that. 
Um, I'd like to think maybe some kind of redemption for Jet, but I'll have to wait and see. He could just be a bit of a nuisance all over again. So time will tell. It always does. But what a fantastic episode. I really, really loved it. Um, some great character moments for basically everyone in the episode that was featured. So that's also very impressive. Um, normally it's more so like, oh, this is very much focused on Aang. This is very much a soccer centric one. This is a Katara centric one. This felt like everyone had some really nice stuff. And again, considering it's like 22 minutes, bloody impressive. Um, and on top of all that, we got some cool visuals and some cool fights and power usages and oh, some funny moments and some like wholesome emotional moments at the end. Was, this episode had everything and I'm very glad I, I chose to watch it today. So damn good. And Cabbage Man returned, absolute MVP of the show. So 10 out of 10, basically. I really love this episode. This is definitely one of my favourites of the season so far, I would say. Potentially one of my favourite ones we've had in the show. Um, but it wouldn't have been effective um, if we didn't have all the character development and setup that we had in the previous season and a half leading up to it. So you also have to appreciate all of that. And, oh, TV shows are good, aren't they? I love TV shows. But yes, that is going to be everything for now. Fantastic episode. Can't wait to see what's going to happen next. And until my next reaction, thanks for watching.